In the last episode, we built a simple worker, but what happens when our worker has an error? Let's have a look. We'll modify the existing worker to fail for the super hard jobs. We'll also put in a shim to assume that it charges someone's credit card right before it fails. Okay, so now we'll run the server and we'll create a new super hard job. And over here, I'll run IRB and require worker. And we will perform async, a super hard job. And here we can see it crashed. Uh, we can see the job failed. It wrote the failure to the log, but the server's still ready to take more jobs. So if we come in here and we add an easy job, it'll hum along and it'll just work it. So we can see that the server's still handling requests. Now a really important thing to keep in mind is that Sidekick's going to automatically retry jobs that fail. Remember how hours charged a credit card right before failing? If the code isn't taking retries into account, then you're going to end up with some really unhappy customers with a ton of repeated charges on their cards. This is why it's important to write your jobs in such a way that they can be retried an arbitrary number of times without causing any problems. This is known as item potence. You're not going to be watching these logs for errors in production though. You'll want to add an exception monitoring service to your application, such as Honey Badger or Bugsnack. That way you'll have email notifications and a record of exceptions as they happen in production. Exception monitoring is a critical step because otherwise you'll think your site is humming along while there are exceptions happening and automated processes you thought were working just aren't. This has bitten me in production and it's really not something you want to explain to your client or your boss. So at present we have some jobs happening but we don't have any insight into the Sidekick system as a whole. Sidekick ships with a web UI that you can use to view the state of your various job queues. It's just a rack app so it's easy to plug into whatever web framework you might be using. In our case, there's no existing web app, so we'll just set up a quick rack app to run it standalone. We'll add rack to our gem file, and we'll also add Sinatra, and we'll run bundle. And now we'll write a quick config.ru rackup file. We'll require sidekick, we'll configure it, just the client here. We'll require sidekick web. And this is the web UI, and then we'll just run it. So this is a Sinatra app. And so that's easy, and now we can just run the dashboard with rack up from the command line. And our dashboard is running on port 9292, so we'll go to localhost port 9292. And here we go. This is our sidekick dashboard. Okay, so we can see that there are some job retries in place right here. There's one retry in place right now. We know that they'll fail because we still have that exception in our code. So it's got two minutes to run, so let's see if we can fix it before it tries to restart. So we'll take out the exception. I'm going to kill the worker. I'm going to open up this. We will remove the exception, and we'll restart the worker. Let's go look at the dashboard. And it'll retry in two minutes, and we can just go ahead and retry it now. So if we retry it, boom, it succeeded. So as you can see, Sidekick would have retried the job. We just did it manually and then it completed successfully. So this is your most typical workflow. You have an exception of some sort, either because of a bug in your code or because of an external service failure. The problem either goes away or you deploy new code to fix it, and Sidekick retries the job and the end user is none the wiser. What happens if you don't resolve the exception before Sidekick gives up on retrying though? Well, let's see. We're gonna go add back in the exception and we'll modify the worker. So let me kill this. And so I'm gonna open up the worker. We'll add the exception back in and we're gonna modify this with Sidekick options. We're going to tell it retry zero times. Okay, so now we'll restart the worker. And I'll open up an IRB again. And we'll perform the super hard task again. And so it failed. So now let's open the, the web app again and have a look at what's happened. So if you look, we don't have any retries scheduled because we told it not to retry again, but we have something over here in dead. And so now our job is in the dead job queue. So this is where jobs go to die when their retries have been exhausted. In this case, the retries were zero, so it got exhausted immediately. But typically, I think they get exhausted in around 21 days. You have a long time. Uh, there's exponential back off, and this is all entirely configurable. Anyway, this is useful if you want to keep track of what's gone horribly wrong in your system without being resolved in time. So once you've resolved the issue plaguing these jobs, you can still select them and retry them. So in today's episode, we saw how Sidekick handles exceptions, and we discussed how you need to design your jobs to be idempotent in order to avoid problems when they're retried. We also discussed the importance of exception monitoring in production. Finally, we enabled the web UI, and we explored how to configure how frequently jobs are retried. 
as well as what happens to them when they've retried too many times. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.